These giant rounds, is this the new norm? Yeah, I think IPOs have been pushed out further. Our, our business is no longer investment banking. We're a venture capital, so we've, we do venture and growth investing alongside a number of these other funds like General Atlantic, IVP. And uh, SoftBank's really, you know, really revolutionized the industry by thinking big and providing you know, large blocks of capital to both take companies private and to uh, back large winners. So. Now, the future of the, the Vision Fund is, is in question in terms of whether they are going to continue to take Saudi money or not. We don't know the answer to that. Right. Let's say they say, no, thank you. Right. How big an impact does that have on, on the Silicon Valley ecosystem, given all these companies that have taken money? From well, SoftBank to this uh, point? SoftBank's made quite a few bets. You know, I, I would think that uh, there's a lot of money coming in there from China, from uh, Abu Dhabi, from uh, other countries around the world. And so, I, you know, he'd still have a significant fund. I mean, so you think that he could fill the demand even if with, uh, without yeah. his sovereign wealth? Yeah. So we hear this talk of an everything bubble. Yes. Do you think we're in an everything bubble? Yeah, well, um, I think right now valuations are, are priced to perfection and are assuming continued economic growth, continued profit growth, and you see corrections like you've had this week and today, early today, uh, it's really a reflection on people's outlook rather than the current performance. The, uh, the market is really a reflection of future earnings rather than current earnings. And there's concerns about is growth slowing down. I mean, there's companies that reported fantastic earnings and the stocks tanked. You know, so you kind of wonder, well, what, what's going on here? They're, they're, people are looking out a year, two years to see if the, if the valuation in the future is really sustainable. So if we are in an everything bubble, is this yeah. something that's going to pop? I mean, is this one or two oh. years out? Is this, is, no, this, I, is this more imminent? Yeah, I mean, will if we have a re it'll be a softer. I mean, I, I think if you take a 10-year perspective or a 25-year perspective, which most people don't do, this will just, you won't even notice it. It's a blip. Yeah, you know, if you take a 25-year perspective, you probably don't even really notice the 08 correction. I mean, so you, if you have a long enough time frame, it normalizes. So I think if you're caught in the moment, you know, right now, uh, 2015 was a real bubble. It kind of softened, and then we valuations have moved up again this year. And you know, I think they'll they're down, you know, 10 percent from the peak. And you could, you know, as long as we have this economic growth, there's a lot of uh, wealth destruction on both sides. There's new industries being created, and there's old industries being destroyed. And so it's not necessarily. Uh, uh, you know, zero sum game, but there's there is wealth being transferred between the, the new entrants and the old. IPOs coming next year, Uber and Lyft, maybe Airbnb in yeah. 2019, maybe 2020. Um, do you think there'll be any surprises? Yeah, look, I I think uh, I think Uber is a great company. I mean, they. You think 120 billion dollar valuation is fair? You know, I think they just have unlimited opportunities globally across all these different categories. I think their biggest challenge they're going to have is figure out how to allocate their assets, allocate their capital across these different businesses. How do you pick what product and what country and, and, and prioritize it? That's going to be a real challenge for that company. So that's a great company. And they have businesses inside of it. The food delivery business is a great business. You know, that's, that's worth $20, $30 billion mm -hmm. to stand alone. The technology team is great. I, I, that's a really uh, exceptional business. Lyft will be a fast follower. There's other, you know, I think Airbnb will get out. There'll be a number of software companies that get out. So I think there'll be a, you know, uh, you know, there'll be, I think it's going to be front loaded where the success will be. Second half of next year, I don't know, the kind of bets are off, but I think the first half of next year looks pretty solid. And the, and, and the marketplace isn't really on off, it's really a filter. You have to look at it, and the really good companies can control their destiny. What we tell our companies is try and have a, you know, two years of cash, because you do have a correction, you just want to be able to power through it. We also look at it, say, look, if, if you want to be valued, at $3 billion, we want you to have at least 10% of your market cap in cash. Mm -hmm. And so you've seen these larger rounds, because you know, the valuations have gone up, but you really want to say, look, you, you don't want to be a $3 billion company with a $50 million you know, cash cushion. I mean, that's right. kind of, that's a joke, right? Yeah, I mean, so you really want to look like a public company where you have some you know, serious cash reserves if, if you're going to be private. Good to know there are some conservative people. I'm very <laughs> conservative. <laughs> Taking precautions. Jamie Montgomery, March Capital Partners, um, always great to have you on the show. Thank you.